Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some more Rise of Mordor action with you today and today we have the Battle of Helm's Deep and we have some Elven Archers here from Linden already focusing down some Mordor rabble which are escorting up some sappers I think of Isengard to basically blow up the wall whether the, these uh, Mordor rabble will break before the uh, rabble, before the sappers get that is quite likely, they are already wavering and these uh, Elven Archers are already opening fire but this is a long one today, so you better get your snacks and your drinks and be ready for a long and epic siege of Helm's Deep. I'm sure this will be an excellent one, as always. This was sent in by a member of the Discord, so they are usually and very close and uh, of high quality. And if you'd like to join the Discord, the link is in the description down below if you'd like to send in your own replays that you think are worthy of featuring on the channel. And there we go, these mortal rabble here are already at 113 men. As these uh, white hand sappers just bug into the wall, and they look like they're going to blow a hole, and they may kill a load of elves here. We've got some Noldorian archers. They're already firing at the next line, which is uh, some berserkers coming up. So I guess they've maybe been told that they got got to leave these sappers to like just blow up the wall. If it is the case, and that's really cool. But we also have, uh, along with Linden, we also have Gondor defending Helm's Deep today. Obviously, Rohan is yet to have its uh, faction fully fledged in the game. It is. In a work in progress, I believe. I presume it's coming out in the next few updates. And it'll be great when we can have them in there. Because then we can have elves and Rohan fighting together as they should. I mean, these aren't even the correct elves. You should have uh, the elves of Lothlorien. But we have the elves of Linden here. I mean, the elves of Linden look excellent as well. And their long, glorious line here. I mean, yeah, I don't know what the sappers are doing. Maybe they're just getting ready. Maybe they're just in position, ready for um, the explosion. I'm not really sure. But if you want to see more Rise of Mordor action on the channel, I always know that you guys enjoy seeing it. Then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, well, we'll get into this. I mean, I'm just going to fast forward, I think, for now. Because, well, nothing major seems to be happening. I'll say that and then, like, some explosion will go off. Looks like the elves are actually going to move away. They maybe have just realized that this uh, sapper unit is here. And it looks like it's now been given the order to... Uh, Blow up stuff. Here we go. Right, the sappers should be about to fly. Oh my gosh, there we go. Uh, oh, jeez, that kind of caught me unawares. I expected them to throw something, but no, they just kind of blow themselves up. And there's like a couple of them left. There's four of them left, but they've used their ammunition up. And uh, I don't think they killed many of the elves. They killed... Well, I say that, I don't think they killed many. They killed like maybe 20, which is not bad, but they could have got a lot more of them. But they've got a hole in the wall now. That is the main thing. And the uh, Urukai can now swarm through. They have six units of swords ready. And they're able to combat forward this wall as well. They also have uh, towers and ladders coming up ready. It looks like Gondor is already sending over reserves. Got some spear infantry ready to take on the uh, masses. I do apologize if this is a little bit uh, janky. I think it's just something to do with the map. Or maybe the sheer amount of units on the uh, battlefield. There are over 10,000 Urukai. This is a 15,000 man uh, siege. And this, I don't know if this uh, map's like, well, 100% uh, like lag free sort of thing. I don't think it is. It's a huge, huge map. It's an excellent looking map though. We'll have a quick look at it as the Urukai just power through. So they've got obviously like the classic slope that they need to come up here to attack this front gate. Um, this is going to be pretty uh, hard to break through. They've already got Archer's Blackroot Veil firing down. And then there's like the second uh, wall and keep here. And there's like... Just a little bit of a uh, open area in between. And then you obviously, that's like the Hornburg there. And then you've got the outer wall over here, which the Urukai are now breaking through and fighting for. So those are the elves have been left in charge of this as they were in the movies. We do have a small elven uh, carry force over here with some Noldorian equestrians ready and waiting. But the uh, Urukai are also ready and waiting. They have pikes ready and crossbows, which they're able to just dedicate to keep an eye on there. So it'll be interesting to see if those cavalry can break through. It's unlikely. So they might have to just wait until all the uh, troops are committed. So yeah, the elves are now getting cut down. That's kind of... I mean, these are elven archers. They should do okay against Isengard infantry. They're pretty beefy. And now we've got Ringlow Vale men-at-arms. I guess they're signed, supposed to represent like the, the lower-tier militia units. Yeah, these archers, as in, like, the actual movie, they get getting cut down and killed. But, I mean, in the books, obviously, the elves didn't appear. They weren't there at all. They, uh, 
it was just Rohan holding on its own. The elves were busy in the war in the north. They couldn't send troops down to Rohan. Which kind of makes like their victory at Helm's Deep even more impressive. But yeah, there will be cuts and there will be bits sped up because this is a long, long battle. This is over two hours long, this uh, battle. So there will certainly be cuts, especially when it comes to like huge choke point areas as there will be further up. You can see here over here, there's going to be some nasty choke points that are just going to go on for hours or could go on for hours. But it does look like the Urukai are now onto the walls as well. These Urukai infantry are now landing and they're going to be fighting some Noldorian swords. The Noldorian sword should win that fight. Urukai, oh no, these are Urukai scouts, not even infantry. Yeah, they're definitely going to lose that fight. Uh, these scouts are not very good. Uh, well, they're, they're okay, but they're just not against elves. Um, just put it like that. They, I don't know, they might be medium swords. I'm not actually 100% sure what they are. They're light melee. Not even medium. Wow. Um... I'm surprised they didn't send them in first. Let them weaken up these uh, defenses. I mean, they're sending in their proper hardened uh, Urukai infantry first. I mean, these uh, swords over here are losing to Urukai infantry. That's kind of surprising. Urukai infantry, I'd have down as being one of the weakest uh, like melee units. And they're beating shipwright nobles, which are a nasty, nasty sword unit. Yeah, I mean, they're now getting, uh, I mean, they're getting support over here from archers. These Noldorian archers, I think, are firing onto the wall. They do have a nice little angle here, and they can just see, like, I mean, they can see the black masses of Urukai up there. And they, yeah, they're focusing down those ones in particular. That's not a bad target. I mean, the, the Urukai have already got plenty of troops off. They're already fighting down here, and they could just flank around now. I mean, the elves have, they do have reserves. They probably want to start setting some of them up, because otherwise this flank, these two units here are going to get outflanked and killed. These Warriors and Loznach are losing. They are by far and away some of the weakest uh, melee in this game. Uh, not melee. Shock in this game. And they're getting out. They're getting outdone by the uh, Urukai infantry. You can see in the background there the elves holding on in their gold armor. It's just glorious. I'm glad we're doing another Helm's Deep battle. We did one ages ago on the channel. If you haven't seen that one, it's definitely worth checking out. Actually have Rohan taking part. In that one. Using a Rohan sub mod. It's really good. It's a really, really good uh, sub mod. And I believe that the creator for that mod, uh, sub mod is also now involved in the main mod team. Or was at some point for Rohan. I don't know if he still is. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I can't wait to see what Rohan looks like in the near future. I mean, it will be really good to see. And there you can see already... Uh, Ringlow Veil Men at Arms unit overwhelmed and killed. And now this uh, flank is available to uh, surround the rest of these Ringlow Veil, which have kind of come to defend this breach point, we'll call it. And I do love like, everyone fighting in the water here. The murky water is just like littered with bodies and be turning red at this point. There are already some shock infantry being sent up by the elves. This will be uh, interesting to see what happens here. They're going to go into combat. They are going to get charged in the flank here by some Urukai. They're going to carry on in, and they, they don't care that they've been flanked. They're going to charge into these boys, and they'll take some names here. And they're getting shot. Uh, actually, no, they're not getting shot. I think the uh, Elven Archers, yeah, focusing down. They're just going to take some more of these guys out. I don't think it required a second unit. They've literally sent all of their reserves in now of the Elves to deal with this uh, area over here. I think... One Elven unit would have been enough. You could have flanked the next one around, possibly. You're going to need more over here, is what I'm thinking. They're losing here quite decisively. And there's more still coming off the walls. There's clearly an, an area that Isengard's identified as being an easy... Uh, well, not easy, but uh, a way in. Put it like that. So, yes, we. it does look like uh, Isengard's sending up most of his troops and forces already. doesn't look like they can even bother attacking this gateway over here. They've got some uh, White Hand Stormers ready, an elite sword unit. But, uh, I mean, look what is ready to face. We've got uh, pikes, we've got citadel guard, uh, fountain guard, all sorts in there. Which is why I can't wait till, like, Rohan's added, because then when you actually do Helm's Deep, and instead of Gondor being used, you have Rohan. Like, it'll just be a bit more harder, because there won't be pikes. You Rohan 
isn't a pike uh, heavy faction. I don't think they would ever have pikes. They have some spears, but they wouldn't have great quality spears. And they wouldn't have great quality infantry at all. They rely on their cavalry, which obviously arrives later on. So these battles would be less, uh, like, Helm's Deep would be less grind if you do it, like, historically. Or, yeah, like, by the law anyway. Not historically, by the law. And have Rohan and the elves. Obviously, the elves will be, like, stubborn fighters, but there aren't, like, thousands of elves. Uh, there are only, like, a few hundred. So eventually you, you, you get through that few hundred as an Urukai player, you chop them all down. Like they're already doing that currently right now. There's not many like elven units that aren't either engage like disengaged or like freed up and like there's none that there's not many that are healthy either. Most of them look like they're gonna die at some point. I mean the Urukai have already pushed on to the next defence over here. They're already engaging some Gondor spear infantry. And the elves are coming off the wall. They're going to charge into these uh, scouts. And in they go. And they'll chop these men down. And the elves defend Helm's Deep. I mean, they've got a lot to kill. How many men have they killed? They've killed around 2,000 and lost about 1,100 of their own. Yeah, they're about to kill 2,000 uh, Urukai. Whether they're the best Urukai in the world, I don't know. There might be a lot of beat scouts. I mean, there's a lot of beat up Urukai infantry units. But I mean, they still look like they've got plenty to come in. And they've got plenty back in. They've got a reserve back here for some reason. Don't know what's going on with this. They've got more sappers. They've got an onager. And pikes. And that's all the way back there for some bizarre reason. And I mean, they've got loads of like half orcs as well yet to come in. Yeah, they've got plenty. And they've got another sapper on a tower. I don't know what the heck's going on there. And they're uh, just letting this white hand storm also just get shot up. I mean, yeah, this is a great idea. It uses up ammo, but uh, at the same time, you're losing a white hand stormer unit. It's a really good unit to, like, hang on to. And there you go. They broke the uh, scouts at, like, this first line of defense by Gondor here. No surprise, really. The scouts are not great. And now Gondor is going to send some spears down to try and contend with this. I mean, they might as well. They've got a fairly good They've still got these guys fairly well contained. Isengard is uh, struggling to get out. And with the archer support, it's certainly helping. I'd say the far right, over, all the way over there, is the only issue for the uh, forces of good. Isengard's like, making a lot of uh, good plays over there. Or he's just getting through. Maybe not even good plays. The sheer, like, sheer brute force is breaking through. And there you go. It looks like uh, that unit's wavering. That'll eventually break. There is another one breaking here already. And there you go. These elves hold off again. Hold these guys off again. But they're still fighting off out on these walls. And it looks like the shipwright nobles are uh, starting to show their quality and get some kills here. Just look from above. Get the highest, uh, well not the highest, but the overview of the uh, battle on this wall. And then in come some more arrows over the top. Are they crossbows firing in? No, they do have some uh, Uruk uh, archers or some Urukai archers. I was going to say, crossbows would not be able to do this angle. But this is a uh, sword unit that is about to go. And you can see over here on this right hand side, the uh, Urukai have broken through. They're going to be against the arch line. I mean, these archers should hold, I think, a, like, a decent while. They're pretty good. And here, like, look at them. They're desperately trying to fire on this unit. Fire as many boys as you goddamn can, men! Oh, they're actually going to turn. These, uh, Noldorian swords are going to uh, distract them. And that's a bad idea by the Urukai. They should have charged into the, uh, these archers. Nullified them. Um, because, I mean, now they're just going to shoot at other stuff. I mean, they're shooting this blob here. I would... Possibly a shot at this unit here. These Zorokai infantry. Like, shoot them in the back while uh, your, like, friendly units engaging them. And now, I mean... Well, this one's out of ammo, luckily, so that's fine. These guys in combat, it's not a bad idea. Another one cut down. Another elven life lost. Immortality won't save you from an Urukai sword, sadly. 
And there's, there you go. They're actually getting pretty chopped down, I see these archers. A lot of, quite a few of them dropping. And yeah, they're desperately trying to fall back. The archers give themselves an extra bit of time and fire some more volleys off. Kill a few more men. And they're going to have to already send in the general. The elves might be out quite soon, and it could just come down to Gondor. I wonder if after they've like taken this bit, there could be a lot of resetting up for the like the assault on the Hornburg. But I mean, they look like they might take this quite quickly and quite considerably. And there's still the charge from over here. I mean, the elves do still have these units here. There is still the charge of that uh, like reinforcements to come. So the elves, yeah, are kind of like representing like the elves, and they're representing Rohan at the same time. While also Gondor's also trying to represent Rohan by being men. It's kind of a kind of an interesting one. How many men can this uh, Urukai can this elf hold off? Not many. It's getting pushed back, and they're in behind anyway. They're attacking these uh, elven archers here now across the bank. They have crossed onto the we like the western bank. I mean, they well and truly had already. They were on both sides of this like bank. If you can call it like that. I mean, it's sort of, it's almost like a river. The little uh, mountain stream. But it looks like Gondor's sending out more stuff. He's sending out Gondor sword infantry. And looks like some spears as well, maybe. Uh, some black root veil archers. They might just be going to reinforce this uh, like winding path up here. Because, I mean, they don't really have any threats over here. I mean, this pike and spear unit, these are two guard units here. They will hold forever. I mean, it'll also hold forever when the... Uh, why and Storm is just happily just standing here and getting themselves shot. I mean, there's another one at the foot of this hill. Oh no, that's Urukai infantry. But, I mean, these Blackroot Veil vale archers have used... I wouldn't say all their ammo, but they've used a considerable amount. And they're finally falling back at these Stormers. I've, either they just realised that these guys have just been stood here for ages. And they're dropping now, these Stormers. Now that they're running the other way. They might have been better leaving them there. And being the first boys in. Because they are going to lose a lot. Jeez, they lost a lot just like running back down that hill. And those Black Rope Veil vale archers are yeah, unleashing hell now. And they've also got like, I didn't even realise these Gondor archers up here, they've been firing. And they've been firing onto the guys on the wall? They have been, I think. They've literally been firing like, directly across this wall and just firing at everything. That's a, that's a very good line of sight. I'd love that they just like, look behind like, the, the crenellations and fire after they fired. They're just firing anywhere and everywhere. It's like, if you see an Urukai, shoot him! And then they hide, because they think they're under fire, and then they shoot again. Yeah, they've just been, like, focusing down this unit. I would just leave it. Just hold your fires. Maybe start firing it. I wouldn't even fire these guys. These mortal rabble. I'd hold your fire, because there's a lot more Urukai to kill. Better targets to come. And we've got some half orcs up here now. Some shock infantry to face down the, uh, Linden shock infantry. They're still fighting on this wall. And a few elements of the, uh, half orcs have already got into combat here. So we'll have to see... Where they, their big axes can break through the armor of the elves. I mean, they're just as well armored as the uh, Urukai scouts. I'm going to say that it's, they're going to lose a lot. But they are chopping down a few of these elves. And just wait till the berserkers arrive. Then that'll be an issue for uh, for the elves. I mean, there's two here. Three there, actually. There's three units of berserkers just waiting there. They actually got their sappers out. Oh, no, this is a fresh unit of sappers. Jeez, they brought a lot of sappers. I mean, not a bad idea because if, like, Gondor and stuff starts to make choke points, really good idea just like here, for instance, if they really bulk up like a choke point here with units, just send sappers in and they'll, like, kill the unit. They'll just, like, explode right in front of it. And you just send in some rabble or something like that, like they did earlier. And you'll do a really good job of killing them. But yeah, I mean, this, but this siege at the moment has, like, no, like, signs of slowing down. So, I mean, at the moment... There won't be a cut just yet. I might make a cut after, like, the fall of the Citadel, like, this outer wall, because it's, it is going to fall. Uh, or it looks like it's going to fall. I mean, I keep looking and seeing, and, like, the Urukai might need a few more men in here. The Elves are holding on. These uh, Shipwright Nobles have taken names. I'd flank these Elves. Flank these Elven archers here. You've got crossbows in behind it. They literally... Are these guys, they, I presume these guys are firing right at the back. Oh my gosh, they are. They are firing right at the back of these shipwright nobles, which are now turning around. Oh my gosh, that was a brutal, that was like execution. Like literally almost lined those shipwright nobles up against a wall and just thought, yeah, we'll shoot them. And in comes some berserkers. 
So, I mean, they're really trying to get the work done now. And pikes are in here. I didn't even realize they had pikes inside. That's a good unit to be shooting down with uh, your Gondorian archers up there. Shoot these pikes. And yeah, these pikes are... Uh, they're not going to... I mean, they're going to do okay. Sorry, these archers, sorry. These are elves, sorry, aren't going to do very well against these pikes. Just like in the movies. They're just like impaled on these long, cruel pikes with their wicked blades. Look at the shape of that pike. That is a nasty looking pike. The men are losing faith, and they're fleeing. There you go, men are wavering and gone. Got Urukai infantry in here, fighting out now. And these Gondorian swords should hold the line. They should probably beat these Urukai. I'm just waiting for the uh, cavalry to come down and probably just charge in this pike line. Like, this is going to be brutal. Also, it's like, well, look at that descent that they have to... Like, your cavalry would just fall and break their legs. I mean, these uh, crossbows, I don't know if they're actually going to be able to fire because it, they don't like uh, difficult angles. And there's, like, literally, like, two shipwright nobles down here, like, holding the line now. And this is a pretty healthy one. If they could get this one off, that would be great. But I don't think they are. I don't think they can. The only viable way to get down is this one here. They could jump off. I guess they could run. They'd be like, run, jump, and try and jump to like that ledge or just jump off here to their deaths, possibly. But uh, yeah, it does look like uh, this uh, sort of first stage is already over. Yeah, the Elven General has died or is just broken. I think he just got overwhelmed. I don't know whether the General's dead. No, he's not died yet. And there he goes. He's just died now. <laughs> As we speak about it, He's just died, uh, and so the elves should start the chain route. And then it's going to be left to Gondor. It's just going to be fully left to Gondor to deal with this issue. I mean, apart from the uh, elven cav, which is also supposed to be just Rohirrim. I'm glad that we're fighting this in the uh, light, because in the dark and like on this map, you can barely see Urukai infantry. It's... Uh, it's an issue, but like that. Black armor, in the dark. Perfect camouflage, really. I mean, in bright silver and bright gold, you're looking okay. But, yeah, these guys in their... These guys in their black are a bit harder to see. They could flank around here with some berserkers and flank into the side of this spear unit. There's a big gap here. Or they could just get around these swords. I mean, they could easily get around these swords anyway. But yeah, that would be a viable option, just attacking to the side here. While also frontally assaulting to, like, pin them in place. But I mean, I really don't look like, doesn't really look like they're gonna, uh, assault up this front bit here. It's kind of a shame. I was kind of expecting, like, a charge up there and then, like, someone that would be like, Theodore would be like, HOLD THE GATE! And then he's like, we must go and support our men. And then he gets stabbed, like, instantly. Just, <laughs> it's, it's like Theoden. Instantly he's like, I'll go and support my men. Give them a morale boost. Get stabbed. Retreats. Probably actually, like, disheartens his men because they've seen that they've the been just, he's been stabbed. Being. These Blackrock Vale archers have been shooting at, like, Mordor Bow Rabble, which are still breaking. So they're wasting their ammo here. So this is not a good use by Gondor. He's just wasting his ammo. But it looks like Gondor's actually going to fully com commit to sending more out this way. Is he actually going to send everything? I mean, I generally looks like he might send everything out that way. Gondor's also still, like, fighting on hard. Fighting on hard down here. And there we go, with like enough like people being killed off. The lag is sort of gone now. I think it's like a combination of the lag and this map. So like if you have like a smaller amount of men, it doesn't lag too much. I don't know whether that was the case. But like the 10,000 Urukai have been depleted a little bit, so it's okay. But yeah, these Gondorian uh, swords are kind of getting a bit overwhelmed. They've been fighting a long time, and then, like, the Urukai can just send in a fresh unit. Not necessarily in numbers, but just in, like, in energy, and they can just send them in. A 
The Shipwright Nobles over here still holding on. Jeez, these guys are so elite. Forget how elite these guys are. They got like, I think some of the units got like, rinse. But, I mean, this unit's holding on a long time. These uh, crossbows are shooting. But crossbows I don't think do, like, personally don't do well if they're having to shoot like elevated areas. Like, that's better for archers. You're better firing in like, directly. Like, this unit, the Shipwright Nobles have to be like, over there. Like in the case when they were shooting at the general, that was perfect for crossbows. They literally, it's like firing a gun almost. I know that like with guns you can fire upwards, but like you're better at firing horizontally than you are like a bit vertically, put it like that. If you sort of get what I mean, I've never fired a gun, but I, uh, but like it would be the same in like, like an old musket. If you're firing that upwards, like an old rifle, you'd be better firing that horizontally than you would vertically. And like by old, I mean like eight, like nineteenth century, like Napoleonic, like even like the World War Two one, World War One, World War Two, you could fire like vertically, uh, or like on an angle, and you do quite well. But yeah, you can see how close these crossbows are trying to get now. That's actually not helping them; it's like hindering them if anything, because you can't loop a crossbow bolt. It'll fire and just go directly that way, and then it'll just all of a sudden just directly come down. So I guess if you could work out the drop. It would work, but I you just can't do that in that game. In this game, <laughs> it just crossbow bolts don't drop, but like that. And uh, yeah, look at the sheer amount of like sword units over here, like being thrown at this spear unit. I still think if you send a berserker and flanked in the side here, they just like chip away at this Gondor spear infantry and work their way down. And it looks like Gondor is going to fall back to the Hornberg already. And I mean. Look at the amount of space in this Hornberg. He's not got many reserves left. What are they going to do with this artillery? I have no idea. They're going to send it all the way up here and then like come around and batter stuff? I don't know. But they've got like a tower here. It uh, needs taken out probably by the Urukai. They need to take that out. There's a sword unit. I just realized it's all the way up here. Oh, it's just breaking. Oh, it's broken and returned. The cavalry could get some easy kills with that. <laughs> just go and feed the monster there is the cavalry. But uh, it does kind of look like this first stage of the uh, battle is kind of over. I'm going to just... I'm going to make a cut. Because I think that speed is going to hold for a little while. And I don't know about these uh, shipwright nobles. But I'm going to make a cut uh, until probably they start like their next assault. Or whether that's Gondor coming down or whether it's the Urukai going up. Unless there's anything major that happens, I'll, I'll obviously uh, you, tune you back in for that. But I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, so we're back, and it looks like, well, it's been a little while. It's been about 10 minutes or so, and it looks like these spears are going to break, but it looks like Gondor's not ready to give up the pass. He's going to bring in some swords now to come and defend this uh, this area. God knows, like, how long this is going to go on for. This is, like, a really, really long battle. Uh, I am sure that there'll be more cuts. But it looks like, oh no, maybe Gondor's going to fall back. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I mean, he's, he's got this sword unit here ready. Like, they were uh, charging up this hill here were the Urukai. Like, these are all the battered units. They are nearly all gone. They're only sending some, like, half-orcs now. And these spears have held for, like, the entire time. They've had arch support. They still have arch support. And they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're losing a lot of men, put it like that. Um, the shipwright nobles finally died. They got like flanked by like some crossbows that like got involved, and they eventually broke. Um, so yeah, that is the elves gone, bar the cavalry, which is it's just chilling over here. It just kind of ran down those Urukai infantry, and then just lost interest in doing anything else. Um, and now also there's like a catapult has moved up. So the catapult moved up. It got to like over here. Then he got shot up a bit, and then he decided no, that that just wasn't a good idea. And I don't know really what they're doing with it. Um, you could just bring it inside and fire down here. I personally thought they were going to bring it up, and, like get in line with the slope and start firing all the like the fountain guard and citadel guard in here, which wouldn't have been a bad idea. So they make them pay for just camping that little gate, which I mean they're fully entitled to do. It's a really good strong spot to do, and if you didn't defend it, then you'd lose the Hornberg. But uh, you've got to make them feel, you've got to punish them for standing there and just take lives with catapults and archers and stuff. It's all I'm meaning. Um, but yeah, so it looks like these Gondor Sword Infantry are the next on the uh, list to be taken out. I don't know whether they're going to send in just like battered units or they're going to wait. They might just wait. Uh, I'm not really sure. 
I'm honestly not really sure. I, this is the first time I've watched it. I saw the time and I was like, all right, I can't watch this through once and then record it. I'll be here all day. But it looks like a tiny unit of, uh, oh, a tiny unit of scouts or swords. He's going to get sent in some infantry, not even scouts. We've run out of scouts to send in and die. And some half orcs look like they might be getting ready to come up as well. They're moving in the back. But honestly, I just get the artillery ready. Start firing on this unit. I'm pretty sure the artillery all the way out there could shoot in and hit these guys. That's not beyond their limits. Oh, it is doing that. Just doing it as I speak. Oh, that one definitely hit a lot of... Uh, a lot of Uruguay infantry. It also did hit a fair few Gondor infantry, but... I think the better idea would be to get it really close. Just, like, get, like... Up to, like, somewhere, like... I don't know, here or something, just start firing on it. Like they've got n very little ammo left. They've got like, they've got some for this Black Root Veil, and then they've got two full ones here. But they, and then it, they, all these ones here dedicated to this front line, which is just not really a front line, it's just Cold War. But yeah, we'll have to see. There you go, that unit's broken for the uh, Urukai. I wonder whether that just broke just due to uh, rogue catapults coming in. Look at this guy, he's just duking it out. Take your geese off a kill. For Gondor! For the men of the West! Chops him down. Stabs him in the gut. And that looks like it's uh, gonna be it, yeah, unless I. Well, I think I can hit some marching. Yep, yeah, some fresh stuff coming up already. Got more Urukai infantry and some uh, half orcs getting ready as well. And these Gondor infantry are just like, good god. Just more! And the big axes of the half orcs are coming in. These Gondor Sword Infantry are holding okay. They're doing just fine. These Black Root Veil Archers are just picking men off as well while uh, these Sword Infantry hold their line. But I mean, how many more units of infantry do they really truly have? One. I mean, the thing is, it gets more elite as well as they go on. There's still a little guard in there. Uh, we've got one, two, three. There's only about three units of uh, infantry they can spare, which kind of surprises me that we have so much, so much more time in this uh, battle. Unless, like, there must be a massive bit of downtime. After this, I mean, the swords here are losing decisively now. And they're bringing up pikes. A good unit to start bringing up. I just start. They really should have saved ammo for their uh, archers to fire at these Black Veil vale archers. They shouldn't have bothered bringing crossbows. Well, you get the crossbows and you put them on the wall here. I know they're already getting, like, shot to pieces by uh, other archers, but it wastes ammo. I mean, actually, maybe they are getting shot. These uh, Urukai crossbows here. Are they firing? They should be firing. I fired definitely at that. That's really annoying, that fire. I'm just... <laughs> but can we have a volley? You could definitely hit these guys here. I think they're trying to shoot these uh, guys in the back, which is just a not good idea. You might as well shoot the Black Red Veil... Black Root Veil Archers. But they keep, like, positioning and they do nothing. So I don't think they... I think they are trying to get a shot on these guys. And the pikes are now in. Don't know how many units of pikes they can really spare. It's like looks like one of the only few that can come up. They've got a couple back there. The rest are still guarding the cavalry. These pikes are getting shot to pieces at the moment. These Black Veil vale archers uh, still, ha still have ammo somehow. They need to get some swords in here. And, uh, it looks like a new, new, a new unit is coming up. And they finally have ammo, so that was the final volley. Are they going to send some more archers over to come and deal with these pikes, or not bother? Looks like it's a not bother uh, decision. And here comes a, a white and stormer coming back up this hill. A fresh one. Why don't they just send the weak one up? Or did that one break? It quite possibly did. Who knows? There's all sorts of stuff just wandering around this battlefield. Now we've got elves and men all just wandering around. 
Yeah, I mean, look at this this angle here. You see fire is coming down, and that is definitely a unit firing. Uh, that's like gond the gondola archers for certain shooting and fire and it looks so good. Look at them just like landing into the shields and then sticking there. It just looks glorious. Now is the time to shoot these guys because they were, uh, well, I was going to say, because they didn't, they are not hiding themselves behind that uh, first line. The first line was not well positioned, but it is now. And yeah, you're not breaking through that. Look at that. I mean, you can see a few arrows skitter through, but I don't think they're doing enough damage to actually kill any of these guys. They are a really, really strong unit. And there you go. It looks like the sword's been pulled back and the archer's been sent in. So I guess that's not a bad idea. It uh, saves the sword's lives and they can defend further up this hill. But I mean, jeez, this battle is... Uh, they're using literally every tactic they have in the book. Every tactic they have in the book. Now I'd definitely be shooting, if I was these crossbows, I'd definitely now be shooting uh, these uh, swords. I think they are. They're certainly getting shot over here by the whole 27 men. So if, surely this unit here then with 139 men can shoot into the back. Yeah, they are, they are starting to shoot a few shots. But mm, looks like, I'm saying they're shooting a lot, uh, some shots, but they're just going into the wall. I'm interested to see. Let's fi fire another one off. Let them go. Had it. I don't know if they're... Yeah, they're bouncing off. I can see, like, them... You probably can't see them. But I can just see as, like, the bolts are skittering off. They're not actually shooting these guys at the back. They're just shooting, like, the... Uh, the cliff. Why well, can't I think of the word for cliff? But yeah, this is another reason why you just bring archers instead of crossbows. Crossbows are great for field like battles, but not for this. They're setting down more archers. They're just going to hold archers in place and try, try and get as many kills on these guys as possible. But I mean, there's pikes down here. If the pikes march forward a little bit, they do a lot of damage. Force these Blackroot Veil vale archers back. But you can see, how, look how dark and messy this fight is. These Blackroot Veil vale archers just literally covered in blood. And, uh,. The Urukai just punching them to pieces. It just the mo one of the most brutal deaths I must think in that like Helm in Helm's Deep has got to be when that uh, Rohan's like infantryman or like well defender just gets punched in the face with like the iron fist of the Urukai. That would be a pretty bad way to go. Like either that killed him or knocked him out, and uh, or he like got knocked out and then killed after because he was just on the ground unconscious. But what a way to like just like see your life just flash before you is like you just get punched in the face with an iron fist. The Urukai. You can see it, look at this. Dotted with fire. Dotted with fire. And uh I mean they're wasting their ammo doing this. They are wasting I mean they've got supply barrels here. Don't know why they're not just uh, using them. I can't even Where are all the Gondor archers? Are they like Got black root veil here. Are these, oh, are these gondor archers now moved on over from this wall. They really should just get on the wall here and then just fire down. Just get on the wall. They're not like they're not getting a good accurate uh, shot here. And there they go. They're getting onto the wall. Excellent. And it's going to be an absolute grind now, just to get through this uh, front line. An absolute grind. Hope you guys are enjoying. Uh, it is. It was going to be one of these. It's, Helm's Deep are never short battles. But it's certainly worth it. Certainly worth sticking around to see how this one ends. I, I'm, I'm not sure how this one will end. There's so many variables still in it. Like, I mean, Isengard's running out of infantry, which is really, really key. Obviously, they've got a few, like, pretty healthy units, but... I mean, there's this, like, tricky path, which, I mean, looks like Gondor can hold forever. There's still the Cav, which is yet to, like, do its bit. They've got, like, two units that are hiding. Just trying to hide from, uh, pretend Isengard that they're not here. Though Isengard just clearly would know that they're here. And then, like, there's the Hornburg yet to still be even, like, assaulted. And which becomes just a one route in. 
So, I mean, there is so many, like, little bits that are yet to happen. I do apologize. I'm just burping for some random reason. It just happens every... It happens, like, all the time, it seems now. I record a video, even if I, like, just focus so hard. I'm just like, Pope, don't do it. Still does it. But yeah, the half orcs are now going. They're just going to run for the hills. They are merely half an orc. They're not a full orc. They're not a true orc. Why would they stand? It's like being half a man. Well, the half orcs, I imagine, are probably a mix of Urukai and orc, aren't they? Quite possibly. And, uh, I mean, look at that. Those pikes are now getting focused down. These uh, archers up here doing real, real work. Gondor archers here. Look at them. Keep your aim low. This man's phasing through the wall. He's that, like, OP. But yeah, they're, like, literally firing all the way down into that blob down here. Down there. And uh, they're just shooting all the pikes. Any pikeman that shows his face gets shot. As there's, like, some serious pixels there as you just, like, zoom in. And it's, like, it's the Urukai, like, shields. It's, like, becomes a pixelated m mess at that distance. I mean, yeah, you can see here, this is all they've got left in reserve of our Isengard. I mean, they've got some stuff over here, but you feel like this is going to be dedicated to that. Like, these forces here should be dedicated to uh, the assault on this gate, but... Would you seriously assault this gate? It's got, like, pikes, spears, archers. Not to mention, probably, oil. These Wyand Storms, I'd have left just at the bottom of the hill. They're just soaking up fire. This is a, a bit... I mean, these guys are nearly out of ammo. This one is fairly out of ammo. I'm surprised it's not resupplied yet. Um, and it gets like half ammo left back, I believe. But yeah, I'd definitely be starting to think about doing that. I mean, the Isengard is slowly working his way up this hill, though. Slowly working his way up this hill. But yeah, Uruk's getting picked off here and there. But I'm going to make another quick... Well, I'm not going to make a cut. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit first, see if anything develops. Does look like actually they might be making an offensive over here. They are starting to mass troops. They're getting pikes ready to combat the uh, Citadel Guard and the uh, Fountain Guard pikes. Well, the Citadel Guard don't have pikes, but the Fountain Guard with their pikes. I look through there. That is what you call death. That is death staring you in the face. I would not want to face that if I was an Urukai. Um, but it looks like these Wyan Stormers may be the first to do just that. And these pikes, but I mean, they need to be careful with the pikes because, well, the archers can resupply at any moment and then they can just shoot them to pieces. Um, so it's going to be hard to. How are they going to move these guys up? I'm not quite sure. Ah, maybe they're not. Maybe they're going to take sappers up. Ah, that's not a bad idea. Take the sappers up with the general unit and march them up. Get them right to point blank range. The archers are like under the towers almost. Or under the gate. Then let the sappers go. Let them loose and go and do their damage. Because they could really do some damage to those uh, Citadel Guard. And they've got more sappers. They could do quite a few sapper runs. They've got another one there ready. They're bringing more swords across this way. Maybe they're reevaluating their uh, options over here. Possibly. But I mean, a mountain dead. Look at that. It's down to 4,000 men. This was a 15,000 man battle. And there's about four to 5,000 men left. That's it. Um, there's about 2,000 defenders, and there's about 3,500 attackers. So I'd say that Ban's power is in favor of the defenders, even though it doesn't look like it is. I'd say it is because, well, this is a hard thing to assault. You could take a lot of men with you. if it's Unless they do something really clever, now the attackers, like, blow up these units, for instance. Then, uh, well... They're probably okay with the defense because these guys, this is a solid pike and spear line. There's no way you can break through that. That It'll become the same on this side. Um, so it will be hard to see how they break through. But we'll see what happens now with this uh, sapper. I would guess they're going to be sending him up. Not a single man yet. 
They're taking fire though. They are desperately trying to shoot him. Or shoot them. And there you go. Now they're shooting the sappers. This is they've got to keep them going, moving at the same time as these uh, white hand uh, stormers. Got to keep them going at the same time. It's the whole. It's like a perfect combo. These guys can just survive. I mean, they are getting shot down pretty bad though. How many are they down to now? Ten. They're stopping both stopping here. They both need to move up together. How these Gondor archers haven't run out of ammo, I'm not sure. These Gondor archers are literally been like firing on like nothing for ages. I know they've got a supply bar over there, but they've still not used it. Black root veil archers. They're nearly out of ammo. The sappers done time. They need to move. They need to move and sue. Go up here and just then just blow themselves up. And there you go. So they've broken through this like line of defense. The archers have to fall back. It's like a combined effort now of the gondol sword and the uh, so yeah, clearly I've been shooting a few of the swords I have these crossbows but it's just not been very effective I really think they could do with their artillery taking out this tower it's a really good it's gonna be a really irritating tower if they like hold this choke point for ages but yeah I'm just gonna quickly uh, probably gonna just do a quick cut as it's clearly becoming a bit of a downtime here oh well, there you go artillery firing what's that firing at? it is actually taking out this tower um, so, yeah, um, unless something happens soon that's quite major, I'm probably going to make a cut. Oh, what we got? Oh, it's only Black River Veil Archers. I keep seeing, like, stuff come out the gates and, like, there's, they're selling out. Oh, God. Um, but no. It's just retreating, man. Urukai crossbows coming up. And it looks like we're going to have an assault. The sappers are sort of moving up, but they're not. There's only eight of them left. They've lost another one. Jeez, that's not good. And they've like... Oh, I thought the, stor the storm units like got big dents in it for some reason. They need to be careful. That they might need to reposition. The sappers are down to four men. Come on. Get them up here. That is ridiculous. And there you go. They're going to get crossbows up and just do the damage themselves. And with the these instead of the sappers. The sappers would have just annihilated this defense. And they're going to do the same on this side. It looks like it's going to be crossbows just to shoot these guys at point blank range. This is not a bad idea, but it's not a great idea. The sappers are uh, nearly dead. They have one man left. Jeez. But I'm going to make a cut until the next like bit of combat phase of combat actually starts and begins. Uh, there you go. The tower is gone, so that's a big win for the uh, attackers. But yeah, I'll make a cut till the next bit of action begins. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So we were literally gone for like seconds. And it looks like, um, well, Gondor sallied out. Gondor, I don't know if he purposely did this or what. But he sallied out some spear infantry. And they were trying to chase uh, these archers down, these crossbows here. Trying to get ca catch them out. But uh, Isengar was ready. He's got Wyand Stormers and Urukai infantry ready here. And they should probably cut through these spear infantry. Then there's archers win for them, so that's a big win for, uh, well, for Isengard. He's just going to get rid of two units. And the pikes have fallen back. And we've got swords, that they're like that gondol sword infantry, that depleted sword infantry unit's gone into combat. And, like, look at these, like, scraps of units. These are literally, like, the bands of men. Or, like, Urukai just cobbled together to become some sort of a strike force. But yeah, I mean, so it looks like, well, everything's sort of going to plan on this side. I mean, look, they're now getting chased as they go back in. Well, actually, no, they're still fighting uh, archers out here, but they got the uh, spears back inside, so that's good. If you're rooting for Gondor and the elves, they've got them back inside. And now they're going to try to get the Gondor archers back inside. They might lose a fair few men doing that. No, they didn't. Didn't lose too many. And now they're going to get chased by the uh, Urukai, you imagine? No, they're not. They're going to fall back. They're probably just going to allow the archers to come up and do the exact same thing that they were doing. And just shoot these guys at point blank range. I 
And now they're getting ready and they're marching up here. They've broken through. Imagine being one of these Citadel Guard and just kind of look at this and just kind of go, well, this is an execution. Literally just like some angry Uruks with crossbows. Oh, they're going into combat. Oh, dear. That's not good. I think that that's a mistake. He's given the attack order and they uh, they got wanted to get even closer because of, like the gates, I think. I'm not sure. But surely if you just tell them to get on like auto fire, they should start firing through this gap anyway. Here we go. This is going to be it, isn't it? Possibly. I don't know. They look like they're going to fire, but they're not. No, they're not. Maybe not then. I'm just disappointed that the sappers didn't do anything. And there we go. They're actually giving the order to fire. Are they actually going to shoot anything? They've got the order to fire. This is the thing. I hate crossbows for this reason. They're so janky sometimes. They just don't want to fire. They just do not want to fire. And Black Rook Veil Arch is going to just, like, run out like no man's business. And then go the Urukai crossbows again. See, this is just what happens. Ah, that's again a mistake. And they're just going to go into combat and probably die to these uh, Citadel Guard. And yep, yeah, run away, run away, run away. And they lost a whole one man in that futile charge that they did there. Well, they lost a few more. But I just get this. Just should have got the sappers up here, and they they would have done the job. Or get the artillery, which has been firing just at all sorts of random stuff. And they're sending out uh, gondor archers. They're actually going to send stuff out to fight. Isengard. I don't know whether this is the greatest of plans, but it might work. It certainly keeps them outside the wall, and it means you can shoot them more, but, I mean, they've not got much in the way of uh, archers left, like, archer ammo left. They've got one unit here. They really could start do, using those as supply barrels would really help. And there we go. Gondor, in, uh, Gondor archers, sorry. In combat with Urukai infantry. So yeah, I mean, it looks like they're going to send out these uh, archers to die. I mean, they might be pretty useful just for like the final defense or something like that. I don't know. And we've got now Wyan Stormers coming up. They're going to have to do something. They're going to have. To, I mean, they could break through here now. There is no pikes here waiting for them. They could charge in, do some damage to these spears, and the uh, when the pikes come up, you just avoid them. You just run, run for the hills almost. When the pikes arrive. I mean, you're going to lose some men from doing it, but it might be worth an idea. But yeah, so I mean, it looks like they're coming to a bit more... Well, I would say it's a quiet period. I mean, these archers are going to get cut down. And that's about it. I mean, I think they're waiting on the artillery. I'm really not sure what this artillery is doing. They just can't seem to make a decision where to use it, where to fire it. I think they're going to bring up their own pikes, and then they're going to go in. And that's not a bad idea. And they've actually, yeah, they've already attacked. They've uh, got Urukai infantry in it. I did not even realize. This might be the reason why it's going to take forever. Because they're going to fight through this tiny little choke point. And they still are guard are just nasty. They need the pikes up here, and I think I'm sure the uh, found guard will reappear on this uh, front as soon as the pikes get into combat. Which I mean, I think they're trying to do now. Oh, please tell me they're going to put the pikes up and not just going to fight in uh, sword formation. Yeah, there we go. Finally, get the pikes up. Now go in. No pikes up, men. Pikes up. Oh no! Don't just charge in, stupid swordsman. 
I, I just like slap my head every time. I just like, just no, just keep them up. Just keep the pikes up. These guys just aren't going to get kills with their swords out. I don't know if it's a mistake or if he purposely did it or what. But I mean, he's got plenty of pikes. It's what the like this faction prizes itself on his pikes, and they're gone. If you just use them like that, they just become even worse infantry. They're probably just as bad as scouts doing that. Probably worse. These archers, though, I think they're about to break. That, oh no, is this another unit of Goner archers that's just been plugged into the gap? Why do this? Why just not just use them, like, in this spear wall here? I mean, I know... I wonder if it's just because the attackers, like, just send some stuff out for us to kill, because we're not going to kill anything in here. I don't know. But, I mean, numbers, though, it's two to one now in numbers. And there we go, the pikes are finally down. Though, yeah, this is the issue. It's like coming through this tiny choke point with pikes. It's clearly just not going to work. Either, unless they form like column formation, possibly. I don't know. But you can see why it's going to take so much longer. They've, their pikes are looking the wrong way. don't know if you can see that. The pikes are looking the wrong way. They're defending a rear guard. Like anything's coming up to surround them. I'm going to fast forward again just because this is just, it's just the same thing. It's just a bit of a grind going on right now. And like, in another instance, if it was a siege and it was a short one, obviously I'd like keep, wouldn't fast forward for the grind. It's that this one is a seriously long one and uh, I don't want you guys to get too bored of it. Don't want you to get too bored of this, but it is going to be a small, like, film in itself, this, uh, this battle, basically. It's so long. There you go, the archers are broken on that side. Are they going to now charge into these Gondol Spear Infantry? Quite possibly. Are these pikes actually looking the right way yet? No, they're still looking the wrong way. I mean, it does look like they're making some sort of ground. I mean, they're sending more Black Root Veil archers instead of using the uh, supply, arrow, uh, supply barrels. They devastate people who've got those supply barrels. You can see down here, I mean, you can see the fighting going on. I'd say the Citadel Guard are probably holding their own. They're, yeah, probably getting a lot of kills. Those pikes are just not looking the right way. I don't know if he's just realised now. Yeah, they have turned around. And that should help. These pikes now should, like, start to push these guys back, get some kills, help actually do some damage. And he's firing some crossbows, and they're... Again, are they just trying to shoot over a wall? I think they are. They were trying to shoot over this wall. It's not going to happen. Now they're getting crossbows up. I think they're just going to engage. There's still a tiny bit of a sword uh, archer unit here. And then they're just going to shoot these spears at point blank range. I think they've got crossbows ready. They're pretty beaten up. And they've still got archer ammo of their own. Jeez, a full unit with ammo. But yeah, I think I'm going to make a quick cut again, just see if anything happens, if there's any, like, differences. I think they're going to be fine here for a really long time, I and mean, we've still got about only 70 minutes and over an hour of uh, content still to go. So uh, I am going to just make a quick cut again, and I'm going to see whether uh, anything else develops. So I'll see you guys again in another moment. So Isengard has broken through. The Pikes have finally done their bit. And they've, uh, slowly over time, I've been watching it, I mean, they're looking the wrong way again now. God damn it, just when I was saying you're doing well. They were, uh, breaking through, and, uh, they've got some crossbows in. I think it's sort of a pull-through, I won't lie. There is a bit of a gap here going on, they've split the spear unit in half. The Citadel Guard is now, uh, repositioned and is here ready. A bit bloodied up, but they're still very, looking very fresh, ready to go. They've got some pikes as well here. And they're actually going to get the spears back. Or try, but they shouldn't be allowed. They should not be allowed to get all these guys back. They should not be allowed. Um, I mean, yeah, so it looks like they're inside the walls now. 
The Hornberg. The Hornberg is starting to fall on this side. It looks like, uh, well, it looks like they just shot a load of... Shot at the uh, Spear Infantry. I don't know if they've got many kills. They try to hit them with the artillery. I think they are. I mean, that's not a bad idea. That could go, like, if you get a good hit, you go th right through the line. But they've not got a good hit yet. <laughs> they could get the artillery inside now. Um, I know there's a risk with the uh, Gondor Archers here, but... So, you need to be careful, but I just hold off on this artillery. You just could have wheeled it all the way around here in the time that has been spent, like, just sat there. And you could have fired it directly through the gate. That would have been a much better idea than just shooting like, wildly like this. They're not even getting many kills. They've got five kills in the entire, like, battle. They've got more sappers here. Get these sappers up. Get them sappers up and get them, like, going down here. These archers can only fire one way or another. That would have been a better idea. Get the uh, catapult, which I presume still has a tiny bit of ammo. Like, yeah, the tiniest. Get that getting up here. And that can fire straight into this blob here. And then get the sappers to come around this way. And then this arch unit can only shoot one way or another. Oh, that could have been a good hit. That nearly was a good hit. But they all hit there. So that's a shame. And they've got all these uh, Urukai infantry. I mean, this is a Gondor infantry unit. A spear infantry unit. These Urukai infantry should probably should break through. Uh, no trouble, really. They've got to glance one more of these guys. Jeez. Like, what a waste of ammo. What a waste of ammo. But they can now get the pikes in, which is the thing. They can get all these pikes in that uh, they have. They can use these to full effect. I mean, they're shooting uh, point blank range with the crossbows, which is really good as well. Use every single bolt up before you go into combat to kill those fountain guard. They've got plenty of uh, pikes, but here we go. It looks like the uh, cavalry is going to be moving. It looks like it's going to try and get around this gap here. I think they've just realized that there's a gap that's evident that was. I don't know. They could do it. I think they could do that. They can get that cavalry and then they can go after all sorts of stuff in this. Uh, Rear defense here. Well, not in the rear defense, but that's like assaulting. Just harass everything over here. And these crossbows still have ammo. They probably want to bring them over. And they've got more spears getting ready to just come and sit in this choke point here. This is a ridiculously long siege. Ridiculously long. I wish they put an hour timer on it. An hour timer on it. I know you probably couldn't get a Helm's Deep battle done in an hour, but you'd uh, you'd certainly be rushed to do a lot more stuff. These guys are just happily sitting around doing nothing. So. I might, sadly, might have to make another cut because these guys just, I mean, they just keep, I mean, they're firing now, point blank range at these, uh, oh, jeez, these fountain guards are getting wrecked. I think they were waiting literally to the last second for those little guard just to move. But they could still shoot over, I'm pretty sure, like, and hit these fountain guard in the, like, the head and all sorts of other spots. Definitely, this is, an, again, another, op uh, like, example of needing archers. You could just loop over and shoot these guys. But, uh, what else are they bringing in now? They're bringing in more Urukai infantry, okay. And the crew's now uh, moving up. They've got no more ammo. They might as well get these two pikes up as well. More crossbows coming over. They're going to send every crossbow unit over they have, I think, just to shoot. I mean, they're going to fire more uh, shots into this blob here. This is where you needed artillery, because this is such a huge blob of, uh, of stuff here. I mean, they're shooting some of these guys. So they actually taken out a fair few. But... You... You just could do it better. Oh, the cavalry's in. The cavalry is in. So they did just outmaneuver these guys or what? But they're going to get a charge off here. Into the back of these pikes. One, one, it's now the front. It wasn't a great one. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Yeah, these cavalry, when they retreat now, are going to get hurt up real bad. And, I mean, did they lose any? I don't know. They lost a few. But, I mean... They didn't kill any of the Urukai Pikes. Oh, God. Yeah. Right, now if I was these Urukai Pikes, I'd definitely start, uh, like, sandwiching yourself, boxing yourself in. Um, but it looks like they, these Noldor in questions might be going somewhere else. But, I mean, yeah, there you go. The Pikes are now desperately running for the uh, top of that uh, slope. I definitely would advise that. Uh, but instead, they're going to go in, and the General's going to have to defend this breach here. Um, again, not a bad idea. They've got Berserkers here, though. They'll chop down cavalry. So they should do okay, I think. And the cav just keeps, seems to just like, not get great charges off and charging into these Urukai, Urukai pikes. And there you go. These, uh, Noldorian questions are going to have a tough time. They're in a very, very elite, uh, unit, so we'll have to see what happens. Yonage is getting sent in. He's kind of just being sent to die. 
But yeah, I don't know why they haven't done this with the archers. They've got literally crossbows. Where are they? Get these crossbows up here on this wall. And they could also with the soldiers flank around. Just flank around these guys. Just do that. They've literally got up on the walls and you'd half the job. Gondor's not paying attention. And the cavalry's coming. It's going to try and punch a hole through this breach by the looks of it. They are not getting through this breach. There's so much nasty stuff in there. Yeah, here they go. They're going to try. They're going to try. They're going to fail. It's not a great view because of the uh, slope. Yeah, you can see this slope is slowing down any charge that's going to happen. Any charge. And yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's not gonna. That's gonna end up poorly. That's a shock. Cover. It's gonna pull through. Oh, the cheeky, cheeky boy. He's gonna pull through the unit. Like people say, oh yeah, it's okay to pull through units if you, but only if you knock it down. I think it's okay to pull it through. Like pull through. But he's pulled through a unit there. Um, and he's gone after the sappers. What a cheeky guy. I hope he gets punished. I hope he's uh, gonna chop down these cavalry. No, most of them are going to get through. He's going to do the exact same thing with this one, you imagine. I yeah, just did the, give the attack order, charge these guys. I mean, they could have done with these sappers to go up and just try and blow up that hole in the line there. I think that's the last sapper unit, and they're just such a waste. What a waste they were. They, like, cost 1,500. They might as well just bring another sword unit or pike unit. Wherever those pikes are, they need to start coming back down the hill. There's only two here. Where's the other one? There's three. I swear there was. Or maybe it's just hidden. Maybe I can't see it. So I'm looking for the perspective of the goodies. But yeah, these ca this cavalry here, it's just kind of just pulling itself through. And I think this is a bit cheesy. It's their fault that they got themselves stuck on the other wrong side of the hill. The wrong side of the wall, I should say. They just have to be patient. Ur the Ur these Urukai are going to have to force them there. Uh, the way out, but I mean, they need pikes here now just to chop these guys down quickly. And they've got archers on the walls, and they're going to try and shoot stuff. I mean, whether they will kill much, I don't know. I don't know. They've got swords ready here, or a kind of infantry. They're prepared. They're prepared. And yeah, there you go. Crossbows up on the wall here, shooting these guys down. But they're not getting many kills. Again, this is the diff the difficulty with the crossbows. They'd be better going around here, and then you get a better direct line of sight and they're shooting to the back directly there. That they are like leaving themselves open to these archers, which are now coming up, and they're probably going to come and deal with these guys. Probably going to come and deal with these guys. Who are you? What are you doing here? More Gondor archers, the same unit, I presume. And they got pikes ready. That's probably another reason these archers are over here. They've got two options there. I'd send the pikes and just push these guys back. Urukai Pikes, I think, are better than Fountain Guard. They probably do fine. Just charge the Berserkers as well. Might as well charge this Cav. They're a shock infantry. They'll do just fine. They won't do fine if they're running away like this. Not quite sure what's going on. They're literally hiding everything up on the wall so the cavalry can't get it. What a strange decision. But yeah, I mean, this cavalry shouldn't go inside. I mean, I... Not really happy what happened there. I mean, uh, obviously, their rules, they may have said pull-throughs are fine. But, I mean, in, if there wasn't, then in the case of that, that, that cavalry just kind of, like, defied, like, the defences that Isengard set up. That's like Isengard just going, okay, then I'm just going to go and pull through all your army to just defy the defences of the Hornburg. Like, Isengard's not done anything like that. I mean, in theory, though, Isengard really needs to get this sword unit off the walls here and surround these pikes, because... Then they could do some real damage. But the cavalry's now losing, thankfully. I mean, it's losing, I think, because of archer fire over here. And it's losing over here, I think, just because it's fighting shock infantry. And the Berserkers finally turned around and drew some balls and just decided to chop them down. Mm. 
But I mean, that's then the Elven contingent finally fully gone. These guys have been like sticking around for ages, far too long, one might say. And they've got Berserkers up here, fresh in Berserkers. Charge them down, they'll go and do some damage. Obviously, you don't want to get them outmaneuvered. Now, if the Pikes just need to defend this choke point like this, yeah, they've got like in a column formation. They are trapped in here are the Elves now. They just made themselves even more trapped. They can just get shot by the uh, crossbows. Gonna have to sit at the back of the map and just wait and be patient. In all, in, in all honesty, I can see Isengard probably just leaving them there. Why bother? Why bother coming up? But the uh, Pikes are losing. The Pikes are losing. They're getting shot. These archers here can't actually get a good enough angle. I don't know what they're trying to shoot. Maybe these Pikes here. Uh, maybe they're trying to shoot down here. Into the play blopping form. But I mean. I'm still annoyed. These swords need to get a move on. Get around here. Get going. You could do the same with the pikes. You could get the pikes up here and then get around. And it looks like the general is going to go up. He's going to go up onto the wall. Um, and he's going to... Uh, ah, so he's shooting the uruk infantry. But yeah, if he gives you storms from the wall, then go around. You can flank these guys heavily. And then the pikes have to... With, uh, the, so the spears over here have to withdraw more troops. But yeah, they've still got loads of stuff left for this final defense. Well, I am going to fast forward again. Um, we're trying to get... It's not, again, a down point. It's just that, again, it's just length of video. Don't want to... Don't want it to be going on for two hours. <laughs> a two, would be my first two-hour long video, but uh, I'm sure you guys don't want to watch a two-hour long video. You might. You might honestly want to watch a two-hour long video. I'm sure some of you do watch the, the full thing, but I'm sure most of you don't want to see a long grind like this go on forever. So, uh... I'm just going to let this go on. The cavalry looks like it's just going to sit at the back there in that camp. Um, I mean, they're not really going to do much damage now. The pikes are coming up. They can just... Oh, yeah, that's a smart idea. Just defend this long line here. It allows these uh, three units to get out and do what they want to do now. That's smart. And then the cavalry's again nullified. But I swear to God, please, someone. Oh, he's getting off over here, these Uruk infantry, and he's getting his general off. What is he doing? Just go around. How did you get? You had your guys on the wall here. Get around and go off this one, and then you just destroy, literally the entire pike line, and some spears. But I'm gonna quickly make another cut again. It looks like uh, well, we're getting to a bit of a, a bit of a stalemate. We'll put it like that. I mean, there's some more spears being sent across here. If there's any chance of breaking through, it's gone now. Um, the spears here might be going onto the wall. Let's go and fight these guys on the wall. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Take out these crossbows. Yep, they look like they're going to do exactly that. Yep, they're defending this spot here, which they needed to like do a long time ago, and uh, it looks like the Urukai missed out. I'm pretty sure in the uh, in the movies, or uh, there's like a way up from this wall up onto the onto like here, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But. Uh, just gives them another... It, interesting if you could have that way up. Because that will be give another avenue up. Makes it a bit harder for, to hold this Hornburg. Because it's literally just becoming a stalemate. So I'm just going to make a quick cut. And we'll see you in a moment. So it looks like the Urukai are into this side. This breach over here by the slope has uh, finally been breached. They are inside. Um, maybe it be a little bit of pull through. I'm not sure. But I mean... The Elves did it. So if the Elves did it. Then the Urukai can do it. I guess they get one pull through each. And I mean, they need to do it. They need to speed up this battle. It's going on forever. It's, I mean, I'm enjoying it, but uh, I'm enjoying watching it. And I hope you guys are as well. And like the bits you're going to see. If you saw this entire two hour long uh, battle, you'd realize that the 90% of it is just fighting and choke points. But um, yeah, so I mean, to speed this up, they are eventually going to break through here. I mean, they've got some pikes in behind. They're surrounding these guys. Uh, how these uh, spears aren't losing, I don't do not know. They've also like got round over here, and uh, they're basically surrounding these. Uh, the pikes and the spears are finally going to be gone, and then these uh, white and stormers can just go into these gondol spears. They should not allow these guys to get out. I don't think they can anyway. But yeah, that's a better idea. Just charge these guys down, get these guys moving because they can't stand in much longer because these archers are being racking up kills. Uh, I think they're going to get moved over here possibly to shoot these guys down. I do not know, but you can see there's just another two units ready and waiting for them. And still like 40 odd minutes of this left to go. So there will be another cut probably when we eventually get to that uh, instance. But it does look like, well, I mean, they could just surround this unit here. So, I mean, this unit's kind of done for. They can. Sur I would surround this unit and deal with this one before you have to go and deal with these two. 
But yeah, Pike's coming up. They'll deal with the spear infantry quite nicely, I would have thought. And uh, yeah, they're going in. They didn't set up properly, in fairness. They might get quite a few of these pikes. This is one of the last few fresh pike units. They need to keep a few alive because, uh, well, there's a fountain guard still to go. And they're looking the wrong way again. What are they doing? Oh, there's the Wyand Stormers this time looking the wrong way. What is it with Urukai looking the wrong way, hey? What's so appealing about it? What is so appealing? But there you go. Pike's now going to actually come in and surround. Um, but yeah, they've got like a pike unit all the way down here waiting as the elves are just like still waiting with their like 20 odd men just to find a way in. They just fancy uh, coming back to uh, Helm's Deep. But yeah, this is frustrating. I would probably, and they could just hold here as well with their general. They can hold this one choke point here. It's going to take forever to break through. Forever. So they, yeah, they've got like so many more units that they just uh, can pile in if needs be. And then, there we go, a pike sandwich. Bon appetit. It's a delicacy in Isengard, it clearly is. Pikes on either side and something squishy in the middle. And this time it's going to be Gondor Spear Infantry. And uh, I'm sure these guys are now losing decisively, yeah. I'm surprised these guys haven't, like, just... They haven't set up their pikes properly, which is why they're not killing them quickly enough. We've got crossbows up here. Are they going to just, like, get up here and then fire? I Yeah, I'd get up here and then fire at the general. Like, make him pay for just... I don't know. Everything he's done. Everything he's done. But, uh, yeah. So if they, like, fall back at all, they get, like, impaled on this on a pike here. It's a bad way to go. So either you die on a pike in front of you and die on a pike behind you. And there you go. I think the attack was sort of been given, but they sort of wheel off to the right. Very Macedonian of them. They're actually getting in behind. They're killing a few of these pikes. You need to be careful. There, there they go. They're wavering. No surprise there. You could charge in with the uh, Wyand Stormers now. You could probably kill the rest. Um, but yeah, so... Oh, jeez. We're getting a bit of lag for some reason. Uh, don't know why that's happening. We have uh, literally less than 2,000 men left on the battle. But uh, yeah, so anyway, don't know why that's happened. Uh, maybe just it's just the game just going. Please, just end. End. We've had over two hours of uh, two hours of recording here. We don't need to. We don't need to see any more. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be bombarding here. So I'm going to do another quick cut, and I'm going to just like. When they eventually make an assault on that, I don't know, that frontal bit, I'll uh, I'll rejoin. Or maybe when they broke through, I don't know. I'll uh, when, there, when there's some sort of major development, you'll you'll be back. Okay, Legionnaires, so we're back. And, uh, well, as you can see, a fair amount of fighting has been going on. It's been like 20 to nearly 30 minutes of just constant fighting in this choke point with pikes. And I felt like it's just not really what you want to see. Um, it's just literally, as you can see... Where they started and where they, these Isengard Pikes have pushed them back to. I mean, they've died as well. These are, this is made up of two pretty beaten up Pike units currently. And they're clearly trying to push these guys back. So I think I've shown you the last like 15 minutes of the battle. The archers are now in here in combat. Um, the uh, Fountain Guard are down to about 50 men left. The Citadel Guard is uh, pretty banged up as well. Uh, but yeah, so we've got like the last 15 minutes. I hope you guys uh, like understand why I just... Like, some of you would be like, yeah, I want to see every last little, like, detail, like, last second of, the, like, the battle. I want to know, like, every little bit that happens. But a lot of you, I'm sure, just don't really want to just watch as, like, a pike, like, fight just goes on in this little, uh, gate here. It's annoying that there isn't, like, another gate, because I swear, like, to get to the final stage of the Hornburg, there's, like, two gates and another one around here. Which would have made it a bit harder uh, to defend, obviously, with this, like, few amount of troops left. Um, but you, yeah, you can see here, Fountain Guard looking pretty weak. Citadel Guard looking pretty weak. I mean, they've got a few. They've got like another fresh pike unit here. They've got some more pikes over here. And some more pikes, uh, like, at this gate here. They, ah, I see what they're going to do. They're going to bring, like, the fresh one in and have the weak uh, 48 men just ready to, like, defend here. And they've got crossbows here ready. They're just going to shoot any Noldorians. They're getting too close to so those, uh, 
Elves, I thought they had a chance, but no, they truly didn't. They just did not have a chance of getting in here. Uh, but they also, these like these crossbows can look the other way. They've got a fairly good angle in, like, there. I can sort of, like, show you. That's, like, the angle they've got. And they sent some uh, berserkers in now, I think. Or they're going to try and send some berserkers in. Don't know whether that'll pay off because these, uh, there's pikes still in here. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to probably just fast forward it a little bit. And we'll, we'll carry on watching down here as it, like, goes on. But, I mean, it's certainly the Urukai, if they win tonight, are going to, like, well, win today, are going to certainly uh, eat well, like, the, that evening. Because there's so much man flesh just lying around. Meat is well and truly back on the menu for these boys. Man flesh. Yes, I mean, imagine, a cool animation they could add in is like an Urukai, like, biting, like, the neck of a, or like an orc biting the neck of a, uh, Gondorian soldier. That'd be really cool. There's like, um, cultist sort of orcs that you see, like, in, uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, there's like a orc that looks like, he's got, like, red face paint on or something, like, in the Return of the King. Um, he's, I'm pretty sure, someone told me that they're from, like, a, like, Melkor's, like, cult or something like that. They're like a cultist unit, and they, like, just go around biting people. He like bites a Gondorian soldier and like, oh, what a bad way to go. Just get bitten by an orc. You don't know where his teeth have been. Probably eating other man, other men or other orcs or just anything. Anything that they can get their hands on. Apart from anything but maggoty bread they'd rather eat. But yeah, you can see, look at this. There's a pike like mess going on down here. I mean, the Urukai have more pikes and they're bringing in berserkers now. They're uh, slowly getting their way in. I mean, they get like a couple of them get through and then they get like stabbed by all the pikes. So I think it's just better to keep them out. The pikes on their own have been doing a good job for uh, for the most part. Who knows? Who knows what, uh, who's going to win this? I mean, the general's now down here. He's now reinforced. Everything is in this choke point. It's a do or die situation for these uh, boys down there. I think eventually they're just going to punch a hole through with some... Uh, like if the fountain guard die... They're going to just send everything in. And I mean, then the uh, Sildur guards will go. The archers will probably follow soon after. And uh, then it'll be the general on his own, you imagine. Yeah, if the fountain guard dies soon, then uh, everything's lost. But they've got 12 minutes left. So, I mean, someone's going to win. It's 300 versus 1400 now. Or better. I mean, they're more like 400 against 1400. But, uh, yeah, still not much of a chance. They've got the Cav just running all the way around. They're going all the way around. They honestly were going to try and go all the way around and catch these guys out. These pikes are going to get there to that little choke point in time. And I don't think these... I mean, they, they could do a bit of damage, but I think they'd run into one unit, probably die or break. Just because their general's dead. And, uh... Well, they're so weak, those units. And they've run a long way as well. They keep running around, like, exhausting themselves. And now they're in, like, no man's on. They can't go after either side. How many of Fountain Guard left now? 46. These guys are down to. And the Pikes are really pushing in now. They are really, really trying to force back these uh, Gondorian troops. Oh, I can't get quite a front on view of like the, what they're facing. The Pikes are looking the wrong way again. Sort it out, men. The fans guard will take advantage of that. Stab a few other down. But yeah, they, they're trying to really like push in now and try and like get more Pikes in this front line. But I mean, they're losing a lot. You can see a lot of uh, blood. A lot of blood splatters, a lot of falling Urukai. And yeah, they're looking to the right. They're not actually attacking properly. That's a bit of a waste of pikes. How many found and guard left? Still fairly healthy numbers. And yeah, they're going to reposition. Rethink their strategy. Just needed one unit of archers left. One unit of bows. And they could just shoot over and just end most of these guys' career. They just don't even need... I mean, they've got crossbows here. They're firing, but I don't really know what. They're barely firing down there. 
Looks like they're going to send up some more berserkers or swords. Yeah, more swords. Try and send them in, try and break through. Who knows whether this will work. Fountain Guard responding as is like the Silver Guard. Everything's responding now. And they're all getting in really close to the pipe climb, which is going to help the Isengard out. Oh, great. This is going to be an absolute cluster. Look at this. The Berserker's just like, he's, get, he's just got inside the pipe climb, inside the pikes, and then he gets stabbed, just like that. <laughs> he thinks, yes, I've done it. I've got inside, and then no. And they're sending crossbows in really, wow, they are really like, they're piling stuff in now as Isengard. Stuff's already retreating. Probably the broken stuff. Don't celebrate. There's plenty more to come. There is so many more Isengard troops. Look at that. Look at the white hand banners. So many Urukai in there. For the white hand of Saruman. Yeah, they, oh my god, they're like just being stabbed and sliding across the ground. It's just like, probably comes from like all the blood. It's just a slippery surface down there. But uh, yeah, I mean, and more morale's being popped. I mean, surely these guys, they're exhausted. These guys got to start dying. At least the Isengard's like had his men fresh. These pikes are exhausted. The general's tired. I'm surprised the general's very tired. He's just been stood up here the entire battle. But I mean, yeah, this is like, this is, this is a cordon going on. A cordon off Isengard. And I mean, it's uh, sort of working, sort of not. You can see here, look at the devastation that's gone on in this battle. This has taken, like, ages. And I'm, if any of you got this far, uh, do let me know in the comments. And uh, also, just well done to you. Um, you have gone through an absolute saga of a battle here. And this is... Uh, Certainly a, a pretty, pretty bloody one. I mean, well, it's, it's very bloody, to be honest. It's over 15,000 dead men on the battle, battlefield. Someone's got a goddamn job when it comes to clearing this all up. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? Like, I mean, if the Uruks win, they just don't care. They'll probably eat everyone. Um, but if you like the men, what do you do? If you win this battle, do you just, like, pile them all up and put them on fire or what? Take days to clear it. But there's still Fountain Guard at the right at the back. I mean, surely these guys will break at some point before they'll all die. I know they're like elites, but I mean, surely they'll break. And they still got generals here. They might want to start popping uh, rallies themselves, uh, Isengard. They've got like units wavering and breaking back here. They might could have done with them possibly in the fight. Archer oh, starting to lose though. They're clearly getting to combat a little bit too close into combat and they're dying. The thing is, Gondor's going to, like, sort of get it between, like, the balance right between attacking and but not getting too close to, like, the pike line. Like, it's, like, all the way back here still. It's, like, all the way right in the back of that um, gateway. There are so many pikes left. And there's now not enough pikes, I don't think, to stop all these Isengard troops getting through. So the Isengard is slowly chipping away. I mean, he's still got so many Citadel Guard, though. He might do it. He's breaking these uh, crossbows. Imagine if there's oil here. This would have been devastating. Just killing all of those poor uh, poor Uruks. They might need these uh, fresh units, uh, the weakened units of pikes. They've still got another unit of pikes, actually. I'll take it back. They don't need them. They're going to break through. Surely they're going to break through. The pikes are gone. I think the Fountain Guard are gone. No, they're not. I just can't see their unit icon. Oh, it's under the generals. I had a moment there, I was like, oh god, Gondor's done for. But yeah, look at this, this is just disgusting. It'll be interesting to see who's got the most kills. It'll be interesting to see who's got the most kills, but I'm going to just quickly uh, fast forward a bit more. And yeah, they're, they're celebrating over routing another unit. There's still plenty to come. There's still like hundreds and hundreds of Urukai in this one choke point alone. Though it's down to 1,100 men. They've killed like 300 and lost about 100 themselves. 
So, I mean, I mean, no, that they can't carry on on that current ratio. They need to kill like 500 to every 100 they lose, and then they basically all be dead. Everyone will be dead at that ratio. They're falling back. Oh, they're giving up this choke point. This is it. This is the end of. This is the beginning of the end, surely. Yeah, the Urux are pu piling in. This is the beginning of the end. The Urux are in. Uh, I don't know if he purposely did that or, like, I don't know what. Maybe he's just like, well, it's it, the battles have been gone on long enough. And we're not going to win. Let's just end it now, quite possibly. The Wyand Stormers are now in behind. They've kind of, like, got through. I don't, they probably moved at the same time as the Cyril of Guard. And they, they're now forming a box of their own. I mean, these units here, these pikes are going to be finished. The Cyril of Guard here in the Archers. And it's now going to be the General left. And the General can't withstand all these pikes. So, uh... That is probably going to be GG for them. I'm going to just... We'll just watch as the final downfall of Gondor goes on. But it's been a very good defense by Gondor. It'll be interesting to see how many kills they've got at the end. I'd like to see how many kills like the Fountain Guard have got, for instance. Some of these pike units. And some of the... And the Noldorians. I'm sure the Noldorian swords got plenty of kills as well. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of over. I'm going to just fast forward. <laughs> just This battle's gone on so long. And uh, it is definitely by far and away going to be the longest one on the channel. Hey, I guess we're setting a record today, though. I guess that's uh, one positive. Is the cavalry just going to charge in? I think it's just going to charge into uh, pikes and just die. Commits a bit bit of uh, elven seppuku. Yeah, it, this, is, uh, this is a poor way to... Uh, not a poor way, but uh, a bad way to go, but... There's nothing much else they can do. They can either this or they just wait for Isengard to come out, which will never happen. And then there you go. They're just going to charge. And they might break through, you know. That wasn't a bad charge. Yeah, they actually might. I mean, he's kind of like... He's easing them through. Yeah, there's a couple got... One got through. I think the rest are trying to. But they're going to waver. And uh, yeah, there you go. Men are wavering and they're gone. And that's an ally gone. Our allies are running. And there you go, the elves are finished, finally. They took forever, and there you go, the pikes are gone, the spears are going. It's just the general left, and uh, in this last, like, sort of minute, it's just going to be the general making a final stand. And I mean, it's just, yeah, he's just going to die to pikes. When these pikes reset up, they'll just circle, encircle him, and that's it. Now the pikes don't even need to worry about, like, the cav over here, because they're gone, so they could reset up here. The archers, yeah, there's a few of the archers bugged out and were stuck up here, so I don't know what quite happened there. But uh, that's a bit of a shame they didn't have like 30 odd archers to help him. But I don't think 30 odd archers was going to make the difference. He needed like 30, 40 more pikes. He needed a lot more pikes to be honest. Um, but yeah, so they actually might go for the cap point. They could go for the cap point. I think they are with their general. And they're just going to surround this general with pikes. Yeah, the, yeah, the Citadel Guard are going to try and retreat. They're going to waver though because they break their formation to try and uh, chase him. And there you go. A valiant defeat. For Linden and Gondor. What a finish. Um, that was a long one. About 2 hours and 24 minutes. I definitely shaved that down. I don't know how much too. But uh, I've certainly shaved that down. But well played to Locksmith. Boris, Executioner and Cold Breeze. That was a really, really well uh, done battle really. And just as a long, long, long grind. And we'll quickly look at uh, Boris who sent this in. And look at his results as Linden. He got... 119 kills, 100, uh, 119 kills with his general, 163 with his best shipwright nobles, uh, 370 kills with his uh, Noldorian swords. Uh, I think that's the best one. Jeez, none of the others really got close. A few got a 300, but then the rest are like getting hundreds. Um, I don't know where they were, like in the battles to like, get that many kills. Um, and then like his archers got 264, I think the best one, and his cavalry getting 171. Um, so we'll quickly have a look at Locksmith. Uh, his general getting only 65 at the end there. His uh, Fountain Guard getting two, 324 and 340. Excellent. His Black Root Veil vale Archers getting 377 and 340. And his Gondorian Archers getting 480 and 417. Wow. And one of his Gondor Spears getting 301 and 328 another. So, I mean, he got some really good unit kills there. So, well done to him. Then we'll have a look at Executioner. Um, 304 kills one of his Urukai Infantry. Uh, a lot of others getting into the 200s and a few in the 100s. Um, 
And then, yeah, his Berserker's getting 31 kills, a bit of a poor showing for them. But his Pike's getting 81, and some of the others getting, like, into the 30s. Again, not that great. And his Wyan Sapper's uh, not doing so well. I don't know if his was the ones that set off the breach or someone else's, but someone did waste their Sappers, and someone used theirs quite well on the wall. Then Cool Breeze. I think it might have been Cool Breeze that used his on the wall, because he brought the Mordor Rabble here. Um, but his general getting 65 kills. Uh, none of his... In, I mean, actually, one of his infantry did get into the 200s. Another couple got into the 100s, but uh, he actually brought a lot of scouts. So I guess um, they weren't going to get many kills at all, really, to be honest. Let's be honest. Uh, his uh, half-orc axe is getting 213. His berserk is not doing great either, um, but they were kind of just in the end being thrown in against pikes. 183 kills with his pikes there. That's pretty good. His uh, mortal bow rebel getting not many kills, and his Urukai arch is getting a fair amount. His uh, crossbow is getting 106, which is okay, and his capital getting 12, which I think he could have used that a bit better, but um, it did its job in the end. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this battle, guys, uh, and got to the end, well done to you. Um, please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment if you'd like to see more Rise of Mordor action, and just to show your support as well. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.